a prophetic service today. We are going to talk about the things of the prophetic. And uh, if you look at that, that, uh, that title, from the mouth, or rather from the eye to the mouth, you are going to see what that is all about just now. Now, let me just at the outset just say this: when it comes to when it comes to the Hebrew and the Jewish customs, I've always been fascinated by it, and it is good to have good knowledge about the Hebrew customs. And when when you understand that better, you understand a lot of the Old Testament better, and you also understand the role that Jesus plays in the fulfillment of so many of those things. So what I want to share with you today is basically the year, the Jewish calendar that we have just entered into. Um, and I'm just going to share a bit on that. We're not, it's, it's too extensive to, to speak about all of that today, but uh, we'll see in Afrikaans, what's a bit tracking here to what, what relevance does that have for the church today? And then more specifically, what relevance does that have for you where you are seated this morning? When it comes to the year that we are in right now, the Jewish year. And the Jewish year that we are in right now is called Pei. It's P-E-Y. It's called Pei. And we are going to be talking about that just now. But what I first want to do, and as we are talking, I want you to remember as well the three ways that the Lord showed me that we spoke about two months ago. Now, those three waves that we spoke about, I just want to say this before the Lord and before you. I never studied any of the Hebrew years. I didn't study any of the Hebrew calendar. I didn't look at, into any of those significant things to bring about uh, explanations of the three waves. I never touched it. The three waves that I saw is what I declared to you and what we put out on social media and I want to refer to it a little bit this morning again. Because I cannot tell you what excitement goes through my heart and my life. When I declare things like that by the Spirit of the Lord. Let me just make this abundantly clear again. It's not the man. Never look at the man. It's always him. We need to get that clear. Don't ever elevate a man. No matter how wonderful or how great he preaches out there. Or a woman. Then let the name of Jesus be the name that's on your lips constantly and He gets all the praise, glory and honor. We've said from the beginning here that no name shall ever be in lights here. No man or woman's name except the name of Jesus. So that's, that's the premise. But when I looked at the three waves again, from the premise and the perspective of what the Lord showed me in the Hebrew calendar and where we are right now, the excitement was boundless. I got so excited when I saw the three waves that's coming into the body of Christ and that's going to come into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that's coming and it's on its way. It's the first wave. Remember, it was the wave of the Father. It's the wave of love. <clears throat> Do you remember that one? Then we spoke about the second wave that's coming. And I said to you, it's the first time ever that the Lord showed me where He divided the three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Where the middle wave, the middle wave is what excited me because of what was said, what was shown at that time, where the middle wave is the it is written wave for the body of Christ. Where we talk about declarations and decrees that are going to go out. Now when we speak about the decrees and the declarations, it's from the mouths of God's people who are tuned into the things of God to have the word of God resonant on the inside of them. And I said to you at that time already, when I spoke about those three waves, there are Christians hear me today, and it saddens my heart that are going to miss it. Yes. Because they are too much into formalities, they are, they are too much into religion, they are too much into formats, they are too much into systems, instead of, lock, instead of locking onto the yes. Spirit of God. I want you to hear this word clearly this morning. It's going to help you. So that middle wave is the wave of the it is written, the declaration. The last wave we said was the Holy Spirit wave where the power of God is going to come in and it's going to flood and it's bringing people into the kingdom of God. And we said that's going to be a, a time of revival. It's going to be a time of harvest where the Lord is going to bring the souls into His harvest. But then, in all of that, when I finished the three waves, the Spirit of God enlightened upon my heart the sons of Issachar, if you remember that. Now, in my mind and in my estimation and reasoning, 
The sons of Issachar, I thought, Lord, uh, you know, it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, those three waves. The sons of Issachar. And I went to go read that again, and I want you to look at it with me, please, in 1 Chronicles. And if you can go there very, very fast. 1 Chronicles chapter 12, I believe it is. 1 Chronicles chapter 12. Please, those of you who are not so tuned into the prophetic, link in with me today. Connect. Get a couple of gigs on the hard drive. And I want you to connect strongly onto this signal because you need to hear the message today. I'm so glad you came. Now, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, it brings in a little verse in the midst of all of that, and I'm not going to explain all of these things again. We've gone through this. Where you have all of these tribes of Israel, and you have the thousands, and it talks about, just, just to give you an idea, in 33 it says of Zebulun, there were 50,000 who went to battle, expert in war with all weapons of war, stout-hearted men who could keep rank. Then it talks about the Reubenites and the Naphtalians and the Danites and the, the Manasseh ones and the Ephraims and it goes through all of them. But smack bang in the middle, the Lord puts this little verse, verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, and I want you to see this now, who had understanding. Say that with me. They had understanding. Say it again please. They had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. Here we only have 200 people amongst the 50,000 and the 40,000, only 200. But I want to ask you, these 200 captains or then trained people in the things of the Spirit, in understanding the, sign, the signs of the times, were they important in the equation? Can I just ask, were they important? Can would you say they were important? How do we say that would be crucial? Here's the thing. I don't care how mighty an army is, how many weapons they have at their disposal, how many of the guys in that particular army have war experience and they are, they are stout-hearted. They are like gazelles on the mountains. They are like, and I always like to say, the Arnolds and the Rainbows of the Old Testament. But if you don't know when to go to battle, if you do not carry information about your enemy, it's very possible that you are going to be annihilated. Are you getting this this morning? It's important to be uh, armed for war, but you're going to have to know when and how and what the strategies of what God is saying within that battle, how to defeat your enemy. That's why David, before he would go into the battle, he would call the sons of Issachar. And he would put them down and he would say to them, what is God saying to us? Now come on. What is God saying to us? And if God says wait, you wait. If God says it's time to take up the armor, this is the way that you're going to attack the enemy. And God is very specific in his strategy of confronting your enemy. When you are tuning to the things of the Spirit, the Lord will show you how and when to stand and how and when to attack and how and when to stand your ground. God's going to show you exactly what you need to do. So that is why the sons of Issachar played such an important role in this whole equation. Now on the screen it says, the flow of the fountain within, that's the Spirit, is directly influenced by our mindsets and our paradigms. The work of the Spirit during this Yayan season has been with the express purpose of cleansing and purifying the way we see and process things, our mindsets and paradigms. The Hebrew season or year that we have just come out of was called Hayen. That's the one we've just finished. Now we're going into the Pei, which is the mouth. It's the symbol of the mouth. The ayin is the, the symbol of the eye. Now, Johan, why is this? It's very quiet in this place this morning. You can at least just nod or raise a hand and say, praise the Lord. Don't fall asleep on me this morning. This is a good prophetic message. You need to hear this. Are you with me today? Amen. 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 Now, go with me quickly to the book of Ephesians. Talk about the, the switch over from the ayin into the pain. And Ephesians, the first chapter... 
I need to show you something here that's going to bless you. It is important that we understand the signs of the times. In Ephesians chapter 1, and in verse 17, it says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Watch now, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know, be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, number one, the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, number two, and three, what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe. Now, I want to just read something from here that I put on this morning that I believe is going to help our understanding tremendously in the switch over from the I am into the pay. You say to me, you want, does this carry significance for the church? Because we are not Jews. Can I ask you, does it carry significance? Yes. You absolutely better believe it. Because we are, walk, we, are, we are according to another calendar. But if you look at the Jewish calendar, everything has to do with absolute finite detail in the things of God. It's the year 5780. And we had the 5799, which was the year of Ayen. Now we've got the year of Pei. And it's P-E-Y. I'm so glad you're here this morning, Brock, to help me with the Hebrew, the, the Jewish expressions. But now watch this. Listen carefully of the importance of the way that God has put it in. God did not put those two the other way around. And I'll tell you why. It would have been a major problem for us to speak before we see. Thank you, Pastor Joe. You got that one, didn't you? So we need to see before we speak. So watch this. Listen. The word pay means mouth. And by extension, it means word, expression, vocalization, speech, and breath. In the order of the Hebrew alphabet, pay follows the letter I in, suggesting the priority of the eyes, the understanding, the awareness, what we just read. Before verbal expression, the negative side of it is reversing this order results in blind consumption of mindless character. The chokma, which is the wise one, is swift to observe and then to offer an opinion about something. Ayen gives insight, but it is the pay, the mouth, that gives the insight and expression. Woo! Glory! So what is the saying to us this morning? What this is really saying is that the things that God reveals to you in the Spirit are the things that you need to now speak in this season that we are in right now in the Hebrew calendar. This is the time of declaration and decree. If your mouth is going to be silent of the things that you are seeing in the Spirit, the revelation of the reality of the manifestation of what God has for you is not going to manifest. And I want to encourage you this morning, stop talking death over your life. Look at the contrast there. Death over life. You've got life in life on the inside of you. God is your very life. Speak the things and declare and decree the things that are of the Spirit. To give an example, there's somebody that I know that the car that she has constantly gives troubles. Constantly gives troubles. And we try and help where we can. And I just realized... I believe it was on Friday, that one of the things that could be a major contributing factor is the way that she speaks about the scar. <laughs> Are you with me? <coughs> you see where I'm going with this? And you know, I hear even Christians talk about, you know, this damn thing. Excuse, excuse the expression, but I've got to say it as it is. This damn thing. And I'm going, why do you damn it? <coughs> Are, you, Are you hearing this? <coughs> And, and, and people are saying, oh, that will be the death of me. Oh, no, I can't do that. That will be the death of me. Listen to what you are saying over your life. Speak life over your life. 
Just a symptom arises and they go, Ooh, I'm coming down with something. You don't even know what, but I'm coming down with something. So you're leaving the options open for the devil. He's now got free sway of what he can bring. I'm coming down with something. Now you're standing up over something. There's something here, I can sense it in my body. I want you to know, I know who I am. I know what the scriptures declare, who I am. Yes. I'm going to stand on top of that. And I want to say, you're going to have no authority and no power over me in the name of Jesus. Yes. I know who I am. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. And I am over you. Yes. Whoa, 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 pastor, but I don't know if I'm going to see it till the end of the month. <laughs> There's more months than money. I don't know about this and the other. Listen, you start speaking in the dimension of the provision yes. and finances of heaven's sources and resources and start declaring over your life. This is the month that we do seed faith. We are already in the month of October. I still remember the thought came to my mind, Lord, and, and the thought came in our prayer. I said, Lord, when do you want us to do the seed faith? And he says, the same time he did it last year, the month of October. Why is God also declaring these things to us as the church now in the month of October, in the Jewish calendar, in the Jewish year? Because this is the highest month on the satanic calendar. The month of October is the highest month on the satanic calendar. That's when hell, H-E-L-L-O-E, hell o -E, comes around and you've got fancy dress things that come around and you've got the children that are drawn into it and the children that say, I don't want to be a part of that because I'm a child of God and they get ostracized and they get sidelined by and marginalized by their friends because they do not want to dress up for Halloween. Halloween is the highest dynamic of release of demonic influence across the earth it's the highest release, and it's in the month of October. That's why as a church, every October, we also fast and we pray. That is why next Monday, not tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, next week, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, as a church, we are going to fast, we are going to pray. <coughs> we are going to pray weeks in advance before Halloween happens. And then as the men... We are also planning on going with other men and with these other men around the fire we are going to pray and stand against yes. Halloween. Mm. Because it's not trick and treat. It's not a fun thing. It is a devilish, demonic thing from the very pit of hell. And I'm not going to go into the history of that. It's not necessary. But you need to make your voice known. And you need to stand against that which is not of God. Yes. You see, as Christians, you cannot compromise any longer. Yeah. We need to declare and stand for who we are and as we speak it and declare it, let our words be true, let God be true and every man a liar. So with declaration, I want you to go with me to the book of Psalms, please. And Psalm 81. This is the scripture that the Lord has laid upon my heart for this. Psalm 81. I want to say to you that we are in a high season of God's Spirit moving among His, among His people. And we are going to see things, and we got, we're going to expressly see things, the children of God, that others are going to miss. Verse 10 says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. I enjoy fillet. <laughs> Open your mouth. Listen. Have you been in situations, in conversation, where somebody said something and you already calculated in your mind what your response and your answer is going to be? And the person was hardly finished and you opened your mouth to want to say something and God put a sock in it. Has it happened to you? It has happened to me. Where in the midst of wanting to speak, 
The Lord stopped me. How many of you know God can interrupt your speech? It's really for you to discipline yourself. James chapter 3, go read the whole chapter. It talks about the power of the tongue. You go read that and let it help you to understand that you need to watch what you say. In the book of, I believe it's Psalms, where it says, I keep my mouth with a muzzle. You know what a muzzle is? It's what you put around the face of an ox for it not to eat the corn while it's treading out the corn. It says, I keep my mouth with a muzzle. Um, I, I, I hate to bring in this, this, this comparison, but you know, what's that guy, Hector? That movie, that horrible movie? Uh, An Animal Hector, where he's got that thing. Now, God says, you need to keep, sometimes keep your mouth with a muzzle. You need to watch what you speak. I had a thought there, and I was going to run with that thought. It will come back to me. Open your mouth, and I will fill it. This is what I wanted to say. So you see that in that scripture, it says, open your mouth, then there's a pause. So now you have a choice. There are only two areas you can speak from. Your head or your heart. And I want to say to you, when we are not walking close to, close to the Lord, where we are not declaring and decreeing, most of the time we are speaking from our heads. I want to say to you this time that we are in now, especially this month of October, switch across, switch the switch over from the mind to the heart. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We just say, and it's called in English, flippant stuff that comes from our heads. We just say it, we just speak it. There's a, there's a headline, there's a news flash, and be careful what you say in order not to declare and decree that thing over your life. There's a short little clip that I want to show you just now. It's an old one, and I remember this clip a couple of years ago, and it came to my spirit again, and the Lord says, why don't you just watch that little thing again? And I watched that little thing again with this little guy who stands in front of the church, and he's making declarations and decrees. And we're going to just watch a short bit of it before we are going to listen to that song again that we sang, I Speak Jesus, because I want to say this to you. In October, it is the month to speak Jesus. Speak Jesus, because the moment you speak Jesus, do you realize you are speaking Old Testament and you are speaking New Testament? You are speaking the fulfillment of the new in the old and the old and the new. You are declaring over your life everything when you speak Jesus. <coughs> now, I want to show you quickly on this last one. <coughs> Excuse me, Rosh Hashanah is 5780. Rosh Hashanah. There's a lot of sh there. Rosh Hashanah is 5780. And it's time to see and to say what God has for you. So, I want to say as, as well that the things that the enemy has taken from you. The things that have been stolen from you. Like David with his men. When they came to Ziklag and all their stuff was burnt. And the, the, the woman and the children were taken by the Amalekites. I want to say to you this morning. There is going to come a time in the season we are in right now. Where you are going to rise up and by decree and by declaration get back what the enemy has stolen from your life. Amen. And I want to say to your parents. It is really time that you do declarations over your children. You declare, declare and you decree over your children. Children, declare and decree over your parents. Now it says here, it's time to see and say what God has for you. Rosh Hashanah is a trove of light. And the mountain that is before you, I want you to see just as that light is breaking over that mountain. Whatever mountain you are facing today, you see, what the service is all about today is prophetic utterance. And you are going to, after now, after I'm done here, we're going to sing that song again, I Speak Jesus. Then after that, I'm going to give you an opportunity to today, in this service, start changing the things that you speak. And you're going to declare it over your life today. You're going to decree over your life today. And you're going to speak to that mountain that's in front of you. The Bible says in the book of, I believe it's, is it Hosea, where it says, what is this mountain before you? It shall become a plain. It shall become a plain. It's going to come flat. Because when you declare it and decree it, you'll see what God will do. Pay is also the year of quickening and redemption. The year of tasting what we have prophetically seen in the past. And it's a year of heaven invading earth through the declarations 
that we have made. These three things. Now, I'm just touching on this today. I'm not going to get into the whole thing. It's the year of quickening and redemption. Quickening means it's going to come fast. It's going to be released now. Things that you've been waiting for. There are some of you seated here. You've been waiting for things from God for a long time. I want to say to you, get ready. Because there's a quickening that's coming. There's a suddenly that's coming. The suddenlies are coming from God. And it's going to happen. And you're going to stand here and you're going to say, I want to declare and I want to give God thanks for what He's done. Remember that Sunday morning when you spoke about these things. It's happened in my life. God has come through for me. The year of tasting what we have prophetically seen in the past. It says, say the scripture with me please. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It's the year of sweetness. It's the year of honey. It's the year of pleasure in the things of the Spirit. Guys, I've said again, you have a choice. You can lock into this. I, I would want you to. Don't stay on the outside looking in. Get on the inside looking out. Yeah. And feed some honey across the fence to some others. Okay? Let them get a taste of what we're going to have. It's a year of heaven invading earth through the declarations we've made. Here's the thing. And God showed me this. There are some of you seated here that you're going to be so prophetically tuned in. Listen to me this morning. You are going to be so prophetically tuned in that other people are going to sit with you in the lounge and you're going to watch news events across the earth. And they're going to say, there's this natural disaster that's happened. And there's this, things that, this thing that has happened. And in your spirit, God is going to show you and say, that's a sign of the time. And you will see it. You will see it. Guys, look further than the natural. Can I, can I say this? Please, in the season we are in now, become more quiet with the things of the world and more loud on the things of God. Be fearless. Be bold. Be like a Jeremiah. Do not be afraid of people's faces. Where you go, speak it. You know, but they, you know every time I talk about Jesus in front of them, they feel uncomfortable. Why do you think? <laughs> Des and I were at a wedding one time. And afterwards, you know, especially if you, don't, if you don't know a lot of people at the wedding, a lot of, I've done so many weddings. By the way, I don't do them anymore, just in case you're wondering. Um, oh, we've got such a wonderful pastor here that's so, he just loves doing weddings. And I'm just, I'm just, anyway, I've had my season with that. Here's the thing. When it's the pastor and his wife, we are like the, it's like the excess. At a wedding, because you've got, you know, you've got your main table. Just hear my heart. You've got the main table. Then you've got the main family. Then you've got the lesser family. Then you've got the family that you haven't seen for years, that you haven't spoken to. Mother's baby, Tarawa, but 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 Tarawa, those, the, 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 the ones that just went. So the Lord always puts Des and I with those who need ministry. That's actually really what it comes down to. Oh, shame. <laughs> There's one wedding we are at. I'll never forget. We're sitting at the table and there's this person and he's and his wife, I think that they were married at the time. Now I knew about him, but I didn't know him. I knew about him. A little bit. And while, you know, when everybody's now sitting and you're waiting for the photographs to be taken, the six hours that you wait, <laughs> depending on how many photographs they've, they've taken. Some take a few, others take hundreds. And it's amazing how people's character comes out <laughs> when they're seated around the table waiting for the bridegroom and the bride. So I want to say to those of you who are planning to get married, <laughs> get good photographers. <laughs> who knows what they're doing. <laughs> and as we see the day, this guy says something to his wife and they get up and they go sit at another table. I see there's the conversation and they go and they sit at another table and that's where they went and sat. 
So I thought, that's interesting. Is it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Not that bad. I usually kind of take care of those areas. And later on I heard, and this, this was the, the news that came back to us. He said, that man made me feel so uncomfortable. There was something about him. I felt so convicted that I had to get my wife and go sit at another table. I was going to spoil his whole wedding. Spoil their weddings. Spoil it. But be who you are in Christ. Let that light so shine. Let it so shine that they see Jesus in and through you. And don't you ever compromise. Paul the Apostle said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the, it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Yes. Amen. So this year, we are going to declare and we are going to decree in this Jewish year. I want Pastor Joe, please, to come and then share that little clip with us. Things in your life that are at the moment kind of disjointed, not in place. It's causing you a little bit of headache and heartache and uh, whatever other aches. But you've been talking into that situation, actually fueling the fire instead of putting the fire out. So what you're going to do today is you're going to have your word of honor in my situation. You're going to change your declaration. You're not going to speak, and I want you to ask, excuse me, I want to ask you to start already by what you say about people. Can we stop there? If you get that one right, of what you say about people to other people, it's going to help you a lot, unless it's good. Otherwise, keep it zipped. All right, now just watch this little clip quickly. Pray. I pray in the blood of God, you granted them children supernatural strength and ability of faith and good fire of faith. I decree and declare they are qualified to share in Jesus' inheritance. I decree and declare they are risen out of God. I decree.
Can I just see your hands? Well, then I'm glad I played it. <laughs> that wasn't recited. That was from his spirit. That boy opened his mouth. God filled it because of what was in his heart. That is what he was raised with. Imagine we start talking like that. What? How old is that little boy? Four. Five, I got a 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 six, I got a six, I got a six, I got a six, I got a seven. So, today is right at seven. That little boy declared from his heart things that were real too. That's his reality. Imagine when you start your day like that every day. Declare and decree. And when the guy stood in front of you on the highway, uh. <laughs> do you know that do you know what GP stands for is not counting province it's grace and peace to you brother <laughs> grace and peace to you start watching what you say if you start feeling something in your body father I thank you that I declare that this bump that I feel here on my shoulder this is not of you my divine design in this body is divine healing and the divinity that is from heaven is my reality. That's why I speak to this thing and I command you to wither and dry up completely in Jesus' name. Let that start becoming your declaration. Amen. Amen.